Hey guys, this is Gavinelli. In this video, I'm hoping to have fun and I'm hoping this is the beginning of something new. About 24 hours ago, fellow YouTuber, I'm hoping I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, please forgive me. Uh, his name is uh, Great Akami Sama. He posted a, uh, a question in the comment section of uh, one of my Plex videos. And the uh, question was, what type of hardware is best for having multiple clients stream from the server computer? So I asked, are we speaking of home networks? And I hope I didn't sound like a complete idiot for asking that. But uh, his, uh, his answer or his reply to that was, yeah, a home network with multiple devices using Plex. So I told him, I'm going to answer this question, but I want to answer this in detail. First things first, I don't use Plex anymore. No reason for it, I just don't use it. Well, there was a reason. Um, I started using uh, Xbox Media Center with Navi X, and I haven't looked back since. Um, and now I have the Apple III, I'm sorry, the Apple TV third generation. So a lot of times I convert my movies over and watch them on my Apple TV third generation. There is no jailbreak, so I am at the mercy of the shit that Apple gives you on the Apple TV. But anyhow, when I was using uh, Plex, I was using it on my quad core, my uh, Intel, what was it? Core 2 quad Hackintosh. Now, where's my damn marker? Alright, let's get started. Check out this beautiful illustration I did for you. Uh, what you see right here are specs. And uh, I'm going to break these down uh, individually. These specs came from uh, my Hackintosh. This was what I was using when I was uh, running Plex. This, uh, these were the specs that was in my server if you want to call it that. Uh, the processor was a Core 2 Quad. Um, I was using onboard the onboard network or the Ethernet port. I had a 7200 RPM hard drive. Um, I don't remember what size it was, but believe it, believe it or not, you're gonna really need a big hard drive if you're gonna have a lot of movie and a lot of, a lot of movies and content on there. So you're gonna need a, a hard drive for that, a big hard drive. And I strongly suggest you have a separate hard drive as opposed to your primary hard drive. I had four gigs of RAM in there. Going back, if I could, I would have added, you know, I would have made it eight gigs. Um, I think the more the more RAM you have, the merrier. It's just like the hard drive. The bigger the hard drive, the better. Um, and I was on the OS X platform. I actually tried the Windows platform for Plex, and I did not like it. I believe that shit is written in, like, HTML and HTML code. I don't know. Don't don't blast me if I'm wrong. I, I, I it looked like when it loads up, the shit like I'm about to go to Internet Explorer or something. And I didn't like that. I found there was more of an ease using Plex on the OS X platform. Um as for the processor, mm, this worked for me. This is where the house come in. Let's just say for the sake of argument. You, you're trying to stream to three bedrooms and to a living room. Let's say you got a bunch of BDI cats coming to your house. Hey, man, I want to go to your house and watch movies. Yay. They come to your house, and you all are sitting in the living room, and you probably got, you know, your moms or your dads or, or your sisters or whoever staying at your house. Okay? All right. two people up there Lord knows what they about to do all right and then you got your company okay now here's the situation this is how it's gonna work now in my house I have damn that's my house no um, I got two bedrooms upstairs and then I got the living room so, in my case, we would minus one of these rooms out. Well, there's only, at the time, there was only two Roku players in my house. There was the one in the living room. No, I'm sorry. There was one in my bedroom and the ones I bought for my daughter. Daughters, sorry. So, it really wasn't hard work 
for this quad, this core two quad, to stream to two different Roku players. But the problem I ran into, which plays a very important role in your home network, is this. This is a uh, a wireless G router. And if you haven't changed your router in the uh, last five or six years, you probably have a wireless G router too. And uh, nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be streaming wirelessly. That's where your problem come in. If everything in your house is going to be wired using the Ethernet ports, then you're good. But if we're talking wireless, you're going to have to pull one of my moves. You're going to have to get a new router. All right? You're going to have to get a stronger router. And let me explain why. What happens is uh, wireless G routers, they, uh, they transmit data or they receive, yeah, they transmit and receive data at 54 uh, megabits per second. And uh, if you get a new router, nine times out of 10, it's gonna support wireless in. Wireless in, yeah, it's gonna require you to have to get some form of, uh, you, you, your device is gonna have to support the wireless in protocol. Um, like this one right here, this supports wireless in. Hold up. There you go. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but it supports B, G, and N. This one right here, same difference. Now, do you see that right there? 300 megabits per second. Now, getting a new router is not going to make your internet faster. That depends on the cable company. You got to take that shit up with, with your, uh, your internet service provider. But what happens is within your home network, streaming from room to room, um, the speed is increased between your internal network. So that's a good thing. Another good thing is also uh, when you have wireless devices and you're on the internet, this router, this router, this particular router here is dual band. So believe it or not, when people are watching, uh, when people are watching all kinds of other shit in the house, like Netflix and, and Voodoo or whatever in different rooms in my home, this particular house, now this is my house I'm talking about, um, while they're doing that, I can watch movies that I have on my Hackintosh, uh, that's in iTunes, on my uh, Apple TV wirelessly. And it doesn't affect it. Everything is good. The only time I, I really start feeling it is if, uh, let's say I'm playing the PlayStation. And my son is watching Netflix in his room on his Wii. And my daughters are watching Netflix on the Roku. And Miss Gavinelli, she's watching Netflix. Then we have a problem because we're all utilizing bandwidth. It don't have nothing to do with the router. So there you have it in a nutshell. I just pretty much told you, you know, what you need. Um, you gonna, you gotta make sure that your devices support in, and you gotta make sure you have a, a powerful router. Cause I'm telling you, if you try to, um, if you try to stream on a G network to multiple rooms, you're gonna, you're gonna feel the crunch. Um, you won't already have bottleneck issues with, with, with the hard drive and the, lack of, and the lack of hardware. So I'm not saying this is bad. If you got anything remotely close to this, this is good, but you can always do better. I hope that helps you. And honestly, your main thing that you really need to worry about if you're going to be doing that is, like I said, if you got computers that you're going to be doing that on, not saying to get this particular device. But let's just say you get a card. You need something that supports wireless in. And you're going to need to have a router that supports wireless in. You can't go out and get a G router and then you got a wireless in card and thinking that maybe you're going to get that 300 megabits per second. It don't work like that. You got to go deep. I'm talking deep penetration. <laughs> but uh, I hope that helps you out. Um, if you got any more questions, feel free to ask. I'm done here. Later. Let's say we got a house right here. 
Yeah, I know y'all like, that's one hell of a roof. That don't even look like a house. That look like somebody's kid brother.